I return to the city, and my first thought, Farini, is of you who for so long has been my body here, and I a shadow coming in like gulls. The harbor is big enough to be the size of the sky. The nights are not dead of sleep. Bird's eye is going all night. Sam said yesterday they are trying to force fishing to stay alive here. The future, Farini. Tourists, I hear the fishermen bellyache or just one big marina for what lawyer Burke called the outboard motor cowboys. I laugh from my height and decide to tell you stories, Farini, so long as you will listen to me. I am going to start them today, and I'll send them to you as they get done, just one right after the other to amuse you. You see, I take it there are only two forms of mind about how it is human beings live on the earth. They either do, or they build dying chains to the moon. I want to go to England very soon to get the information to show how this city was in the mind of John White, even without his knowing what she was as a place to go fishing from. She is still a place to go fishing from. She is still Lur Beauport. She is a form of mind. Everybody has to find his or her place. You find a place and you operate from that place. Once you find that place, the place becomes the center of the whole cosmos. It's like the dot that keeps the circle going on. So the center and the circumference are the same thing. Especially if you find your place and work that place to the best of your ability. So you participate in the process. And that's basically what he stood for, participate in the process. For anyone who grew up here, to see the difference in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, to see the changes, which in some ways were incremental, but which, as you got closer to the 60s, were extremely dramatic, it can be said that it was very real. There had been a loss of character. There had been a loss of the original beauty. I mean, remember, painters came here to paint. We're not just talking about Fitzhugh Lane, who was a native. We're talking about uh, painters like Winslow Homer. We're talking about painters uh, like John Sloan, Stuart Davis. They came here to paint her because there was something extraordinarily unique. Olson saw that himself. He saw Gloucester as unspoiled. I felt the same way growing up here. For many, many, many years, it was very much itself and very unique. And when that began to change, it was very real and dramatic to see that change. Olson believed and drew the parallel that the Route 128 was going to be that mole, that causeway, that connection to uh, the rest of the world, and that would be the end of the uniqueness, and it would be the subjugation of Gloucester uh, to uh, the larger uh, megalopolis and the larger world. He'd been fighting all through the 60s, urban renewal. He'd been fighting the filling of wetlands. He'd been fighting the tearing down of beautiful red brick uh, houses. He'd been fighting the change uh, in his the historic West End. Poems, letters to the editor, and finding the Maximus poems where he'd said, Gloucester, you are no longer yourself. You're like uh, any other place. And when he saw that happening, he no longer uh, wanted to, uh, to be part of it. Scream to the editor, December 3rd, 1965. Moan the loss, another house is gone. Bemoan the present, which assumes its taste. Bemoan the easiness of smashing anything. Bemoan a people who spend beyond themselves to flourish and to further themselves. As well made, the Solomon Davis house itself was such that George Washington could have been inaugurated from his second floor. How many ways can value be allowed to be careless with and Hagstrom destroyed? How many more before this obvious dullness shall cease? 
O oh, city of mediocrity and cheap ambition destroying its own shoulders, its own back, greedy, present person stood upon. Stop this renewing without reviewing. Loss, loss, loss. No gains. Oh, not moan. Stop, stop, stop this. I'm sick of caring, sick of watching what, known or unknown, was the ways of life. I have no vested interest, even in this which makes life. Moan nothing. Hate, hate, hate. I hate those who take away and do not have as good to offer. I hate them. I hate the carelessness. Anyone who sees into time and through space, that person becomes a threat. Olson undoubtedly threatened people because he not only noticed what they hadn't noticed, he scrutinized and discovered significance in things that most people ignored. This was the place where Charles recognized both the continuity of how people had been and what they'd done and how they first saw it, the, the, first, the, the eyes that first saw this whole prospect and, and, and then what changed it. It was not just to go back to some imagined pristine moment of idyllic existence, but to, but to yield, to, to give up this manic sense of authority or paternalism that simply only recognizes itself as overwhelming what it lives with rather than living with it. When he talks about polis is eyes, it is what do you see about what is happening where you live. Take a look, see what's going on, my citizens. Take a look around, what have you done to this once wonderful place? He had a view of how we ought to look at what's going on around us. He talks about eyes all the time in the Maximus poems, and he means that we need to use our eyes and our brains and try to find a way of living that honors the past and makes the present as good as possible. People have been made to think that they don't possess any history, whereas everybody possesses history. Everybody is a historical being just because you live from one point to another. When you think that you don't possess any history, it becomes much easier to be manipulated in a much larger sense. One layer gets torn down and then you build new and nobody remembers what happened here before. And partially that perpetuates this continual consumption you know, often at the cost of people who were there. And, and that's where Olson was digging. He was digging into a very particular small spot deep, you know, as deep as you could go into the Ice Age, you know, um, and, and right into the present. And there is a relationship between the Ice Age and the shopping mall, you know. Uh, but people don't see that. We've been taught not to see that. We've been taught that things don't have a price. He wished people to know their place, to relate to it directly, and to build it as a place that they value. It's a, it's a moral project. It really was. <laughs> 